Welcome everybody to another edition of Three Dad Bods with two of the Dad Bods here, Brent and Nickelback, Mr. Carl, the coin collector I salesman. Coins, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be Nickelback for now on. Come yeah, we've got I, I want to be called Silverback be because this. of my luxurious beard, but you know, whatever. Call you a white back is what you're gonna be. <laughs> oh, ooh, careful now. We're gonna get hey, rated by Spotify. So before we start, I, I got a quick question for you, Carl. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking about this the other day because, you know, my beloved Utes are in a final four of the NIT. Give that ooh, for whatever whoopee, it is. Whoopee, I know, yeah. whatever it is. But here's my question. Would you rather have your team make the tournament and lose in the first round or make the NIT and continue to play and give you actually something, some games to watch of the team that you enjoy watching? I'd rather go to the big dance. I mean, obviously you want to go to the big dance, but if you knew your team was going to get blasted in that first round, like say you're like a, a 15 or 16. We've, we've had this discussion you know, last year no, when we I was bragging had. about the Cougars going to the NIT. And you were laughing at me saying, yeah, loser's bracket. So, you know, <laughs> don't be trying to s- play in musical chairs with me because you're going to lose. I know you too. I've known you too long. <laughs> I don't lose. <laughs> anyway, we have an awesome guest on today, don't we, Brian? We do. We do. Many of you know, I and I brag about it often, I've been a member of Orange Theory Fitness now for about two years. 527 sessions, I believe it is. Wow. That's that 500 mark. So we've got, I call her Coach G. She's Gianna. She's fantastic. She's energetic, enthusiastic. And I will say a lot of times in the fitness world that the word coach has kind of a scary meaning. You know, you, oh, yeah. you think of this. Sounds like pain. Yes. Pain. You, 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 you think of this ball buster, this person that's just like pushing you way over the edge, trying to make you throw up into a garbage can afterwards, okay? They're, they're yeah. honestly three ladies, Coach G, Coach Seuss, and Val. And Val's no longer at our location, but these three ladies are absolutely incredible. I cannot stress how amazing you ladies are. Not only with the way, I, what I've always appreciated the most about you all is, especially Coach G. Coach, Coach G will walk by and she's like, Brent, come on now. You can do this. You can tell when I'm spent. She ain't going to try and push me when I'm spent, but she knows when I have enough. And she's like, sit up, Brent, form, get your arms back, you know? And, and I really appreciate that she's like that with every single member that's there. Because we've probably got like a thousand members there, don't we? Yeah. It's, it's close to about a hundred, but still. It, um, still a lot. It's well, a lot. Gianna, Gianna, Brent talks a lot and sometimes in circles. Tell me what Orange Theory is all about, because I, I don't have a clue. All I know is he brags about how he does this and does that and how you're a ball buster and how you're awesome. But tell me what Orange Theory is and tell me why it's something that uh, it's a nationwide company, right? Tell me a little more. It about is it. a worldwide well, company. So you've got over 1,400 studios worldwide. You'll find us in Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Costa Rica, France, Germany. Wow. Abu Dhabi has really? studios now. Yes, you'll find an Orange Theory everywhere. It's a company that began in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and in just a short 14 years has exploded. Wow. 14 so, is all? 14 years. I started with Orange Theory 10 years ago when it was still a baby company. They were still trying to figure everything. But what Orange Theory is, it's a one-hour workout. It's supposed to be a 360 degree workout where you get the best of both worlds. You get your cardio in and you get your strength training, functional training in one Mm. hour, leave it to the coaches, leave it to the design team to take care of you. All you have to do is show up. So you get your cardio, you get your strength training. It is an overall amazing workout. We like to say that, you know, working out to get strong is fantastic. If you have that goal, we're here for it. If you want to get faster in your, you know, cardio goals, you want to achieve more distance, we're here for it. If all you want to do is relieve stress, sleep better, uh, feel better, we're here for it. It can be achieved 
all those goals can be achieved. So we do a really, I'd say it's, it's a product that does a really good job with juggling the needs of all kinds of different people, the goals of all kinds of different people. And, and just to make sure, so audience and personally me, because I, I don't know much about Orange Theory yet, but so you're not a CrossFit strategy. You're not like a regular, like Gold's Gym. You guys are more of a controlled and planned fitness plan and gym, right? Where you, you have a so plan. The, correct. The workouts get designed by a corporate team. So there is a team of professionals in the kinesthetic exercise physiology fields. There is a doctor that oversees hmm. this group. It's a group of about six, you know, just fitness professionals who will design these workouts and the coaches across the network. Over 1,400 studios are in charge of delivering those workouts to the best of their ability. Now we really? get to put our own flavor to it. It'll come out in how we approach members. It'll come out in our personalities, really, our music selection. But the exercises are prescribed by a group of people. I think we also do a great job at differentiating ourselves from everything else that's out there with the technology that we bring into the workout. So mm -hmm. it is a heart rate based workout. You're wearing a heart rate monitor the entire time. There are screens all over the studio. They give you feedback and they give the coach feedback. So we've got our eyes on you the whole time, guiding you. If we see that you're uncomfortable, you know, we're checking in. Hey, Brent, you doing all right, bud? Did you change anything up today that I don't know about? So it, again, there is so much going on in that one hour. Yeah. And all we can pray for is that we're making it look flawless. And, mm, and the great. other thing to point out about her too is you have a tread, you have a rower, and you have weights. Like she's conducting a class with not not everybody all on the on the rower or everybody at the weights. Like you got a group on the tread, a group on the rower, a group on the weights, and a lot of it's like she's talking to three groups at once, guiding everybody, putting it through. Hey, this is what you're gonna be doing free too, you know, and like, it's, it's a constant motion for the coaches to keep everything going and watching. It's hilarious because so said... when I uh -huh. train a coach to become an orange theory fitness coach, so my job, I'm also the head coach at the studio. So I manage a team of coaches and I train them to be prepared. They don't realize they're like, <laughs> whoa, hold <laughs> on. Do you, are you telling me that I have to do that while I do this? And yeah, you got to do it all. Yeah. So oh. let me, you said something about music. So do you, you go to most gyms and everybody's like on their phone. You wonder how much, how they're doing any exercise. Phones. No phones. I mean, you pump in a certain prescribed music selection for a reason for the heart rate. And it's all kind of synergistic as far as the whole overall experience. Right. So we okay. have some freedom as to the genre, but generally the beats per minute have to be high enough to match uh, a certain class. Obviously clean, no explicit lyrics. So oh, that rules pretty much everything Brent likes out. Yeah. So, but, so, but I swear. So, ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we get to bring kind of our own flavor to the classes that each of us, even though we try not to, we bring our own personal bias into the music some way, somehow. But yeah, there's there's some freedom, some wiggle room, but not a whole lot with the music. It just That's has awesome. to be high energy. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you a misconception that I had before I joined, because I would see the studio sitting in, it's kind of in a corner of a little shopping complex type of deal. And then next door on the other side of the road, there is the little restaurant that we would frequent. And you'd see this gym in here and you'd look in, it's got dark windows and then there's orange lights that are in there. And it, like, I would ask my wife, like, what, what are they doing there? Like, what is that? She's like, oh, I don't know. I think they like heat the studio up like super hot, you know? So you're working like, on yoga. Hot, yeah. Kind of like uh, hot, uh, hot yoga, you know? And nasty. so like, so when I went, it was nothing like that at all. You know, this orange light is just orange light. That's all it is. And it's actually kind it's of like pretty modern it's looking. Modern. Oh yeah. The, the it's pretty hip. top notch. Again, they continuously improve technology. So there's tablets everywhere. It looks yes. very techy. 
Yeah. But you don't let people like photograph or do YouTube, Instagram or TikTok videos inside. Ah, oh, then just throwing them on TikTok. Uh, to be honest with you, you're just no. doing, right doing right now. stuff. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're just doing spent. stuff. Yeah. It wouldn't be a pretty video. Oh, you really make it, them work, huh? <laughs> and, and so, and, and like you're talking about, Carl, this, this is why I actually came over because, and, and I've shared this with, with G before, but yeah. I was doing the planet fitness thing and, you know, you do your, had no idea what I was doing. First of all, I'm just mm -hmm. like doing what everybody else is doing and sit down on some weights and do like, all right, I'm going to do three sets of 15 curls on my arms. And you do like knock out 15 sets. Then you get on your phone and you do this and do that and then do another 15 and you're and like i've been here for an hour and, and so yeah. there was no there was no target there was no direction and i'm going to tell you working with working out with the community really changes how you handle your own workout because i don't know if you guys know this i'm, I'm somewhat of a competitive person well i'm aware but, um, no, but i have to deal with his text every five minutes during the tournament look at me i'm at 91 percent now no me three what are you at I'm like so, oh just ignore it <laughs> like a planet fitness it's just you you're by yourself yeah. you may be on a treadmill for a little bit like i had no interest of running whatsoever i was a walker well, right, well, get on a treadmill and i'm gonna walk and that's all well, it's gonna be feeling yeah, here's the feeling I have. I go into a Gold's Gym, now they're calling it something else. And I walk in there and the, they they sure t are really nice to you when they take your monthly check, you know, or or credit card. <laughs> and when they sign you up, and then and 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 even now they don't even show you around. It's just like, okay, you're you're signed up. And then they have someone approach you during your workout. Hey, I'm a coach here, you know, and you know, we want and, and you go, well, okay, how much is it? What are you going to do? Well, we'll work with you 150 bucks or 50 bucks or 75 bucks. And I mean, there's no effort to explain what they're going to do, how they're going to make a difference in my life. I mean, it's very pathetic, the sales technique used it because I'm a sales rep. And I look at it going, why would I want to give you extra money if I'm paying you 50 bucks? I mean, it just, and then it feels like you're in a meat market. I mean, you've got tons of people coming in and out and it feels like, you know, on a, on a week and morning, if you really did want to go work out, I mean, you have to park two parking lots down because everybody's in there. Oh. So the best experience I ever had was something kind of like what you're talking about, except they didn't have a gym. You'd go in and talk to a health consultant or fitness consultant. He'd give you a program that you could go at the gym and do, but he also combined diet. So do you do a little bit with diet too, or, or tell no. me on can see the company going in a direction where they are going to start to incorporate that. It's okay. Pretty, pretty touchy when nutrition and fitness meets. Yeah. Really? Because okay. they are two completely separate areas of expertise, right? You think fitness and nutrition, they, they are married together. In Absolutely. order for you to see results, they have to go together. But Science. Two yeah. completely different areas of expertise. Science regarding nutrition is just a lot more personalized. Not saying that Orange Theory is not personalized. We just found a way to personalize it for everyone in one room. <laughs> um, That's cool. Whereas okay. nutrition doesn't work that way. Everybody's different. Everyone's different. So it's, it's, I have always advocated for there being some nutritional component into the Orange Theory mix, but I also understand how tricky that can be for many reasons. Right. So right. everybody's on place. everybody's we on these leash way. diets, right? Like keto right. or a veg. Yeah. Diets are crazy, <laughs> yeah. man. They're, they're, they're like religious. We, I think what we do a really good job of is not advocating for any of those diets you'll never oh. hear any of the coaches saying yep keto it's <laughs> working for me you should do you we just will not go there you will yell at brent when he has a well, twinkie in his mouth though in the workout right you're tired to do this <laughs> <laughs> they get but, the twinkie out of your mouth <laughs> but one thing so, they do is so we have i'll call them events there's events that happen with our gym and they will bring, give, they will give people the opportunity to yes. come in and present their stuff to members. 
So if oh. you want to go and sign up with them, you're more than welcome. They can give you a spiel. I mean, we've had everything from cupping to chiropractic, everything. Cupping okay. Nutrition. And IV therapy and facials and all kinds of stuff. So we'll give people a platform via our studio to oh, okay. show something that can, that our members can benefit from. We have These to are have a, usually like local businesses in the local area. Local businesses preferred. Yes, all local. Yep. Yeah. So Coach G, maybe you can, because like Carl, and, and he's got one thing kind of said on how he goes into a mine, and a lot of our listeners are the same way. They look at a gym and you walk in, there's all this equipment all over the place and so many questions that balance inside your head. And everybody has a, an idea of where they want to be, but they don't really understand what it may take to be there. So maybe you can kind of walk through just a typical daily class on Starting, you know, like when I come in and I get, you know, I choose my station and where I begin and then what happens at each time. Just, <laughs> and again, every class is different. I don't think there's ever been two classes that are the same, which is great. Yeah, so we've got three modalities that the classes are designed around. We want to improve your endurance, your mm -hmm. ability to fight fatigue. We want to improve your strength, your ability to fight force, get stronger, right? Build lean muscle. And your ability to be powerful, mm. to get a lot done in a very short amount of time to become agile. So endurance, strength, power. Workout is going to be designed around any of those concepts anywhere around the room. When I say anywhere around the room, there are three types of, or three stations, like Brett said previously. We've got water rowers. So those are there to improve your lower body strength and power. They are also the biggest calorie burner, only second to cross-country ski. So Most again, muscles it, works it, yeah, it works about 84% yeah. of the muscles in your body with zero impact to your joints. So anybody can row. And um, the difference is, is Orange Theory teaches you how to do it properly correct I mean, like, they see this yeah. machine and they just have just pulling things or, you know, oh. and, and all of a sudden it's just like like i'll walk into a ymca and i'll see somebody on a rower i'll be like no. there's some videos you can you can go on instagram like those funny videos you see of people <laughs> on a rower and they're like you know pulling it up yeah. pulling it down oh, you'll yeah. see all kinds of fun because it could Which be way? an intimidating <laughs> machine yeah. It could be an intimidating machine. So we yeah. have a lot of people that come in. They've never been on it before. And all of a sudden, they're killing it. And yeah. we're going to show you different ways of rowing. Do you want to row fast? Do you want to row strong? So there's a lot of science behind that machine. That's the rower. Then you have the treadmills. The treadmills we do for endurance purposes. We want to get your heart healthier. We want to get you feeling and breathing better. And so we use the treads for that are um, like a cloud they are oh. so cushioned and so good on your knees so and once you hop on one of those <laughs> treadmills so they are proprietary like they are made a certain way basically like a you're gonna need uh, a bigger okay. bounce for me i'm gonna require a big they bounce. got it <laughs> okay we got you soft covered. on the knees <laughs> but they are so so just gentle on the knees on your joints that when you go to any other gym Everybody yeah. comes back like, man, that's just oh, strong. Right. I can't. It's hard for me. Like when I travel, go to a hotel and yeah. try to get on that treadmill, I'm like, bam, bam. And you yeah. can hear you. I'm like, yes. what is this? Plus, um, if they work, is half the battle too, right? Yeah. So, right. right. Yeah. Then you have the weight room area has a ton of toys. I call them toys. You have toys to improve your balance, your stability, your strength. We've got dumbbells. It's one is five pounds as heavy as 80, 85, I believe. Then you've got benches. So we've got a lot of things to throw your way to improve your functional movement, to help you get stronger, to help you build a you know stronger core, which holds our entire body up. Right. And if someone comes in saying, hey, I've got a 5K I'm training for, never run one. I've got you. It's a cool goal. We'll help you. Yeah. But if someone comes in saying, I just want to be able to move because I've never done exercise and they're 55, 60 years old, we've got you too. 54. 54. <laughs> I'm a complete disaster right now. I used to swim a lot. 
I used to go to the gym a lot, but it's been eight years since I've really been serious about anything related to fit workout working out. So what could you do with a way overweight who really needs to get his ass in the gym guy like myself? So we have seen everything. Here. We yeah. do not feel like, oh man, I haven't worked out in eight years. There's just no place for me in a gym. That is completely untrue. Walk in, give yourself a good two to three workouts before you feel like you're part of a family. Yeah. And part so, of a very good group of people that are just there to make you better. I was going to say, so how does the interaction occur between the other members when you're there if you're all on different kind of workout plans, right? Because everybody's in a different state or different place. So you're delivering the same workout, right? For different abilities. It's yeah. Like the old ladies <laughs> aerobic workout, you got mild, medium, and then Richard Simmons. Kind of those, like she was talking about, those first couple classes, you kind of begin to get your rhythm, where you are at. Like, obviously, Girl, you're yeah. not going to go in and just start running right away. That's just not, nobody wants you to do that. It, it's not going to happen. But you're going to say, all right, the, the, like on the treadmill, for example, you have you have your resting time call it a, a base you have your what you would do as like an exercise a push and then you have an all out which is it's all out so you decide that we want it's you that. to you get uncomfortable we want to push yes. you out of your comfort zone but we know that your comfort zone is going to be different to someone who's been killing it at the gym for five mm -hmm. years we know that Little Betty's comfort zone is going to be completely different from Brent's comfort zone. Little Betty Absolutely. hasn't, you know, moved in five years and she might be closer to 70. We know that your comfort zone is going to be different from the 14-year-old that's coming in to train because they're on the volleyball team and mm -hmm. the soccer team. He's got it all down. Yeah. Going nuts. So we do a really good job at, again, personalizing in a group setting. And okay. it sounds difficult because because it is. It's it's a lot of uh, tuning into people's wants, needs, goals, bodies, personalities. Well, and one I, thing you know, everything. Well, one thing I really noticed it was kind of cool. I was a little campy at first, but then I thought, you know what? No one does this. And it was when Brent was showing these little pictures of balloons and a sign he was holding up, and I was like. What a geek. But then I was looking at it a little more. I was like, actually, it's kind of cool. They're making a big deal about it there. And I'm sure it feels good being in that position. Obviously, you know, I, some people have a hard time taking recognition like that. But it, it does. It doesn't matter if they say they like it or not. It does affect them in a positive way, I'm sure. And so, Absolutely. yeah, I saw that. And so everybody participates in everybody's success then. Correct. It's hundred percent true. Everybody wants you to be successful, and hmm. that, that's, that's what it. It, you know. Like we do these, we do these benchmarks all the time, right? Mm -hmm. like so, for example, like you'll do like a like a one minute benchmark, right? And so you know you're running, and you may finish your mile, right? But then you're you're cheering your neighbor, like everybody else. You're like, come on, you can do this. You can do. You're like everybody's helping each other out, and it's fantastic. It, well, and, and that's and that's so and that's much why you have those the brag moments because other members. I love seeing my fellow members achieve a new goal that they've had. Well, and, that, and, and we're that's there to much, cheer you on, knowing yeah. that you it's feeling hard. like you've got a whole community behind you is going to make you want to reach for more. It's hard. Right. Whatever you just accomplished, we know how hard it is. Yeah, And we're there to keep you reaching for more. We're, we're going to meet you where you're at, too. It's not mm -hmm. like you got to go in there and train to beat Usain Bolt or, <laughs> you know, a power lifter. We're going to meet happen. you where you're at, and we're going to help you achieve whatever you want to achieve. Right. That makes sense. So what I like about that is you get so used to, Brett and I grew up, we were in competitive sports in high school and he even was. church. Yeah, he, well, he would try and compete against me. That's what it came down to. There, the competition can really breed oh, toxicity sometimes. And so, from what I understand, we created a culture of win-win <laughs> with everybody, right? So, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we want you to feel successful, and 
at the beginning, we know how grueling it is to feel like you're walking into a place that you feel like you don't belong in. Oh my gosh, look at all these fit people running on that treadmill. Well, all those people started to move. They all just walked in the same way that you walked in on your first day. And again, like I said, you are going to make it as challenging as you want. And we're going to meet you where you are. Sometimes Brent will walk in and I say, with my buddy? And he's like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> so I say, okay, cool. Let me see what he's got today. And I'll know when to back off, when not to push him. And I'll know when to push him. So we are also reading people's body language. Yeah. We get to yeah. know you really well. You're not just some person that walked into the studio. We know your name after the second visit, for sure. We got gotcha. you. So what's the retention? Because most gym models are based on sign them up and then hopefully you January, you February. Have, yeah, January, February. It's really busy. By the time December rolls around, half the gym's gone or not coming anymore. They're still paying their dues. But I imagine with this culture that you've created, it's it's a business model too that must be very successful to have the growth you're having. Stick. They're obviously people find they move. They have different sure. Uh, things they like to focus on sometimes you know during the summer we see people freeze their membership or cancel it because they want to run 10 marathons in three months and so they've got to train outdoors or whatever it is uh but retention is pretty good our studio has stayed pretty much the same size after covid it took us about i don't know six months to get back to where we were so it a unicorn in an industry that is now saturated with actions, but that mm-hmm. has also had a really challenging time after COVID. Yeah, no, you, sounds you can great. remember too with with any type of workout, if you're not enjoying it, you're not going to continue. You're not going to gonna come it. back, right? Right. That's just yeah. the way it is. So and so there's two things: enjoyment and result. And right. if you don't see, you, if you are busting your ass and feeling miserable and in pain every time you leave and you haven't done one little shredded one pound, you're never, ever going to continue doing that. Yeah. It, that's just the way it is with any gym, with any diet, with anything at all. Yeah. But when you I, enjoy it, when you're with people, you enjoy it. That makes a lot of difference. Yes. I've made so many great relationships from Orange Theory, from working on this company. I mean, some of the best people I have met through Orange Theory, it's just a positive environment. You're Mm -hmm. going to meet upbeat people. They might not feel that way walking into the door and then walking out, they're like, thanks, Coach G, I needed that today. The business model does a really good job with members aren't just that. We're not just coaching like robots. We are connecting with you. I want to know your family. I want to know your wife. I know Brent Mm -hmm. has girls beautiful girls i want to know if you have grandchildren if your dogs are sick if you got into a car accident we are asking all these questions because we want to connect on a deeper level inside the studio so i can't expect to push you to reach more if i don't even know your name ma'am yeah i've got to be able to know where you're coming from if I'm going to connect with you and push you to do things that you've probably never done. Hmm. So you actually almost act like you really care about the person coming to your, your channel. Yeah. And yeah. we do. That's we awesome. do. So uh, I'll, I'll tell you, Carl, too. You know, yeah. I, at the beginning, I mentioned, you know, Coach G, Susan, and Val, you know, I have a lot, you know, I, and I do owe them an awful lot. But also, like she was talking about, the, most of my accomplishments have come because my fellow members have pushed me. They've pushed me over that line. Honestly, when I started, I, I could not run. I, if you were going to tell me I could run a mile, I'd be like, what's chasing me? Not a chance. And so <laughs> as I began walking and stuff like that and doing things and a little run here and a little run there, like then my goal was like to run for a straight mile. And I can remember I was, I was working out next to this guy, Dave, who I used to go to the early morning classes with. And like, I was so close. I was sitting and he looked over and he's like, keep going keep going, keep going. Like he just, he pushed me over that mile. And to me, that was, 
an incredible event in my life because that's something I thought I could never, ever do. I did it. I ran a mile. Impossible for me. Even when you're running, even in high school? 90 feet was my limit. Uh, Back and forth on the basketball court. And so now my next goal was like two miles. And then I remember three miles. Three miles is like unheard of to do inside of a class. (laughs) And and I work out with this 5 o'clock p.m. group, this 515 group, which are just (laughs) phenomenal people. The best people I've ever been around. Awesome. They're like, going like, off after work, man. They are so yeah. like, energetic. So I'm, I'm with the, the same, I'm always on this far end over here. And I'm like, at, at, you know, time is starting to wind down. And I'm like at 2.9 on it. And, and Tim's right next to me, this guy I work out with. And he goes, fuck it, just hit it. And I, oh, I hit it. Well, I was and I hit three. He's like, go, 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 go. And I hit three miles. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing yeah. and then my next thing was five miles and like the five mile class is a little different because it's just a straight treadmill class 50 minutes Dude. which they started they understood there was a need for that right. and that is we no were... small feat he ran five miles in a 50 minute class that had that's a good six that's really minute good warm up so yeah. he chilled in yeah, for I an old man like him, that's awesome. And then so, you did it again. I, I did because I was talking to fellow members. I'm like, I, I really want to hit five miles. I really want to hit five miles. And like, you can do it. We know you can do it. You can do it. You know? And so like, they started to do the cool down. And I was like, I was at 4.92. I was like, I got to do it. And like, as everybody's going over there, you just hit me go. I would succeed at what they you know, they come in and they do those first couple of work workouts and they're just shaking their head. I'm like, buddy, I've been there. I, I have been, yeah. there. I promise you, if you stay with it, you, you will feel fantastic. You really well, will. Well, the only place I've really felt that, or I was, I was a long distance swimmer. So I went to uh, swim the dam down in Vegas and it was a three and a half mile swim. So it's a long swim, two, Whoa, two and a half hours in the water. Very long ways. Yeah. Long ways. And I guess. I got, I'm a big boy. So I kind of drag a little more like a big, big, you know, container boat, but I got to the end and when you're coming out of the water, you're just, just dead and everybody's cheering, everybody's cheering and you're just yeah. like, wow. And then a mar- half marathon, I did that one time too, at 280 pounds. And I got, it took me two and a half, two hours to 45 minutes. And I still haven't repaired my toenails from it. It was very satisfying coming in. Everybody's cheering and you're cheering inside because you know you've given it your all. And it's a very big accomplishment, Brent, that you went five miles and you've never done that even close before. Like a hard thing for yeah. him. And now he's just. Ready. That's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you know, like me, a pull up would be like a mile for Brent. Even when I was a little scrawny guy, I couldn't do a pull up. My arms are really well. I, I still can't do a pull up. I, I can't, can't do, do it. But- I'm probably closer yeah. to it because of the band workouts that we use, you know, yeah. the strap. Stronger. Yeah. Absolutely. And I had no core. I had zero core. Like, I would, G would look at me. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to sit up. You know, sitting up is getting off the couch with a bear and going, hey, Tracy. <laughs> look, I'm, I'm telling you now, what I couldn't do and I thought was impossible is just part of the workout now. It's something that That's I can cool. get through and get to the next step. So I have a question for you, G. So. Kind of tell us what your background is and how and why you ended up where you are today. Then I've got a follow up. You can just go ahead because we'll let you have the floor of most of it. But once you get done answering his question, I was going to ask something that was very close. We have a few people in the audience that listen to our podcast that really love, you know, helping others and working out too. What would be a good track for them if they wanted to have a secondary career or a side career in something like a company like Orange Theory? Tell us kind of what the process is. So I'm going to get real personal here. (laughs) I was a TV producer in Miami, Florida for 11 years. Right out of college, I went for what I thought was my dream. And it was for a long time. All through my 20s, it was the dream job I did. Olympics. I did major soccer vid because I was in the world of sports. So I was a, a field producer, a control room producer, the whole nine for 11 years. Fantastic. Lived out of a suitcase, 
strange job yeah. for a 25 year old, right? <laughs> yeah. um, no responsibilities. No, no responsibilities. <laughs> um, free foods, a whole nine. Uh, then, and I got to see the world, like mm-hmm. so many cool places and meet cool. a ton of kooky people, just mm, very, very colorful people. <laughs> and then I settled down into a relationship. I got married. I wanted to have children. Management changed at the network I was in. And it no longer felt fun. Mm. And it didn't feel like I was changing anything or doing anything meaningful. I was like, I worked for on TV. Like, how? And again, it's a fantastic, fun field, but it looks more glamorous than it really is. Yeah. So it's a job, right? It, it, working weird hours and at the same time i had started working out really hard at around 27 years old and Mm -hmm. i used to go to this boot camp it was in this warehouse and so i flipped tires i did battle ropes i did all this stuff yeah and (laughs) the guy who ran the boot camp became a good friend and a mentor and he said you know what i i bet you'd be really good at handling people and coaching and he's saying what makes you think that dude like there's Mm -hmm. nothing i know nothing about this i was also going through a period of just kind of that mid late 20s turmoil that you go through what am i doing with my life can i have that back um, though i wish i was back at that age again oh gosh no no Uh -uh. like that question i may be drinking too much or i may be (laughs) partying too much what is going on so there was some also mental health issues, depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. even whole thing that I had only found a way out of with fitness. Mm. I fell in love with it because of that. Because I kept pushing awesome. myself harder and harder. And all of a sudden, the doubt, the anxieties, the sadness would melt away. And mm. so I started thinking, I kind of love this. What can I do to get the ball rolling in that direction to where I can make an exit, clean exit out of this career that I've, you know, I was earning well. I, I was now married. What do I do? So I went to my mentor and I said, how do I get started? He said, Mm. you're going to get a certification in this and you're going to start, you know, just learning. I'll, I'll help you learn all the ropes. We'll start, you know, working with anatomy and physiology. I'll start pointing out muscle groups. I'll start telling you, you know, how to challenge people correctly, how to check in with them. And so I had a mentor, which I felt, I feel like it's your first critical. step. It's yeah. critical. It, you need someone who, who has your best interest in mind, but is very giving with their knowledge. Cause You'll well, be my yeah. competition. I yeah. love business, yeah. or you be my competition. And I've never come from that place. So I still work that way. What do you mm-hmm. want to know? I'm going to teach you everything. Like, That's like, a scarcity mentality that right. is always I, just unsuccessful. As a manager now with a team of coaches, it's just not the way that I operate. I mm-hmm. want them to know it all. Like, mm. this is what I got. And if you've got anything to teach me, bring it. So I left TV production thinking that I would be eating tuna and bean forever. I was so scared. I was like, oh my gosh, I've got zero experience in this. And who's going to give me a job? But I got to take the leap. And I did it. I tried for like a week in bed thinking, wait, what did I just do? Mm -hmm. I, I, I was ready to stock up on the tuna. And... No, awesome. life, yeah, life works out. Yeah. Like it just, I was with my little resume underneath my arm at a, like a shopping mall, like a little strip mall in Miami, Florida. And I see this place. It says Orange Theory Fitness. I was like, what happens in there? Same thing <laughs> Brent said. Yeah, and it looks so different from the outside. It's, it's not like cold. a normal gym. <laughs> It's so weird. It's got these orange lights. You see all these machines in there. Everybody's... Everything is orange. Um, <laughs> and I was like, what? And you see the TVs with like numbers on them. 
I was like, what are these people doing? So I go in and I said, hello, can you tell me what happens in here? And they just took me through the whole thing. They said, do you want to take a class? You're going to be hooked up to a heart rate monitor. And I said, hook up to a heart rate monitor. And this is where my head went. I envisioned myself hooked up with a cable. Like an EKG. To like (laughs) a wall. Yeah. And I would have to move around for you to like test my heart. I I don't know. That's where my head went. And when I saw that it was far from reality, that's when I said, man, this is really cool. And I want to be a part of it. So I started working. Sorry, I wanted to grab this. This is the heart rate monitor. Goes right on your wrist, like or my arm, just like that. And I started working at the front desk. Mm -hmm. You've never seen someone take out the trash with a smile and a skip in their step like I did. I was making nothing. And this is 10 years ago. I was making nothing. After making a decent salary. And here I am, like, hitting phones. But I was like, this is the best time of my <laughs> life. Well, it's fantastic. I started making great friends and connections. Because Orange here is just that place where you have to meet people. You have to get in with them. You have to ask questions. They're going to ask questions of you. I said, I, I got my certification, my national certification. The owner of that studio was opening two more studios. And I said, hey, this isn't where I want to be. Like, I want to coach. Mm-hmm. And I remember auditioning with a bunch of meatheads, man. <laughs> like the biggest guys ever. You thought, uh, I have no chance. I was like, there's... She's there's pretty no. small. Okay. She's, she's a I tiny little person, you know. She's not tiny. That energy, though. <laughs> yes. I have been the coach for the Miami Heat cheerleaders for 11 Ooh, years. Uh, Another oh. one was like, I've been a coach for the Miami Dolphins, whatever, whatever. And I was like, I have zero experience. So that's oh. where I'm at. So oh. took the training, got on the mic, and killed the audition. Like, killed me. Nice, nice. And I remember they told the owner of the studio, like, okay, you need to hire her. And she was like, but she doesn't have experience. And I was like, look, I, I will... Be your best coach because I, I'm willing to study. I'm willing to just, I, I want to learn. So they gave me like two classes and two classes a week is like not a lot. Right. And right. here we are 10 years later, I've moved to I mm-hmm. am now the fitness manager at the studio. So you have like a sales and ops manager and then you have your head coach, which is in charge of equipment coach evaluations having their you know your coaches be at the top of their level trainings yeah. all the stuff so i love it 10 years later and i'm still i still feel like i have lots to I mean, learn every day also, you wake up you want to go to work right? i want to go and mm-hmm. i've again there have been periods where i've been like am i doing the best that i can and as a coach that's always a question because you're basically putting on a show like you gotta be on i coached twice pregnant three two pregnancies <laughs> wow. where i'd be in the bathroom like oh and then i oh, come no. out like Sydney, welcome oh, you know it's a great day even it's though i feel like crap yeah day and i think yeah. i might die but it's good. <laughs> so that's awesome it's gotta be all about the people that are attending these classes they give me as much energy as i give them for sure 100 percent. well that's so cool what i hear is someone that really loves the people they're working with their customer really loves the company really loves her career i mean you found the perfect 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 place to be it is it really is <laughs> they texted me said hey g so i've gotten really into pickleball and i'm all about anything that helps you move right and yeah. I said, I've never played pickleball and I'm not an athlete. It's hey, big out here in Utah. Crazy I big. Out. Out. It's big I out here. I work out with the best of them. I like running, but I have never played a sport in my life. So said pickleball. Cool. Yeah, I'll meet you. And I showed up with like my chair and stuff. She's like, you're not going to sit. 
So take- if I go to a Utah Orange Theory and they're not like you, G, Coach G, what do I do? I have them call you, you know, do, or, or do you call them and kind of give them some G pep so that Utah they treat me right? Been-, been to a couple there, and I will tell you, and I, I've been to many Orange Theories outside of just our own studio traveling and stuff. Like every time I go on vacation, I don't, I don't do hotel weight rooms. I find an Orange Theory and I go work out, oh. you know, and. I will say 85%, th- there's maybe two that I went into and I didn't feel the vibe. And maybe that might've been on me. Because that's, that's what I would say about 85 to 90% of the time, you should find consistency mm, okay. in the atmosphere, the community feeling, the workouts for sure, the coach's attention, their want to get to know you like you should find consistency because it's just the way the company is modeled it's just what we are taught to do so Um, is it a franchise or is it a corporate um... franchise corporate mandated okay so all our training comes from corporate the overall um ethos of the company comes from corporate as far as paying all that Good stuff. All the little stuff is going to be franchise. Uh, okay. Based. Oh. But yeah, the fact you so you're not getting just any coaches at Orange Theory. The coaches mm. have to fit a certain mold. Be a coach. Okay. So you can so be I'm... a personal trainer all day long and be boring, right? Yeah. If you have no personality and can't relate with people, but you have big arm muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and train the Miami Dolphin cheerleaders, you're not going to get the job there. It ain't going to no. happen. No. So it ain't five foot happen. two, 110 pound coach G is going to get it. Oh, and a half. half. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. all right. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about a Utah studio. Because when I go, especially to like a new studio and, and I don't know people, I, I size people up. Oh, I could beat that guy. I could beat that guy. Yeah, that guy right there. No. And so like I'm, I'm in a class in, in South Jordan, which is in Salt Lake City. And um, I get on and, and I start doing the treadmill, right? And I'm, I'm doing great. Now, I, I lived, I grew up in Salt Lake City. For 35 yeah. years, I lived there. Wow. For the first time in my life, I experienced altitude. Altitude sickness? Yeah, yeah. I bet. Not sickness, altitude. Uh, and yeah. it kicked my butt. Oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm like a quarter mile in on my warm up, and I'm like, it's- yeah. I went to Colorado. Oh, sure. tried an orange theory in Colorado, and I, I thought I was going to. It's a difference. Yeah. It is totally yeah. different. My son I'm, wondering, is I'm wondering if someone could come down from like Salt Lake to like Nashville and just be like, oh, yeah. open, like three the night. Oh, my God. Look well, this I was just going to tell you, my son's a competitive college runner and cross country, long distances. And, and so the big thing is they need it. He runs his big event is the steeplechase. He loves that. Churches. And his goal is, yeah, to go nine <laughs> minutes, under nine minutes, 3,000 meters. And, Anyway, the the problem is uh, this altitude, and and this is another thing too. Not very many people have ever got under a four minute mile at Utah altitude, and this and it's because of the lack of oxygen here. And Ooh. so w- they're swimming in oxygen when they get down to sea level or Nashville level altitude. Because I mean, the the humidity affects them a little bit. The heat affects them, of course, but. The uh, fact that those Utah mountain runners, when they come down, I mean, they just, yeah. some of them blow it away but just it, because yes. of that. Just I, because of the lines through there. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Doesn't affect sprinters as much because that's more like fast twitch and, you know, you're just moving. Mm-hmm. And even the thin air might even actually help them a little bit as far as, you know, in, in sprinting, it's like an eighth of a hundredth of a second, you know, could get you the world Three record. Three seconds, but. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but anyway, that that's cool. So I'm I'm kind of excited. So so we'll, all right. Tell me, tell tell us what. Okay, what I mean, just walk in, make a phone call. What's the best way to get started? Brett Whitley referred you, please. Oh, of course, we'll put that as a referral code in the, <laughs> in the link. 
You might get one or two, maybe, because, you know, like we have five listeners. kind of referral program through the app where you just okay. send him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because cool. I would make a phone call to your local studio so they could tell you their class time. And okay. you say, this is the class time I'm interested in going to. Be ready to be there an hour before that class time for your first. It's time. not like four in the morning, is it? If you they pick the 5 a.m. Yeah. Oh, oh geez. That's they nice. have it. Okay, they have it. I believe They've it. I believe for it. Everyone. That class but, is the hardest to get up for, but I'm telling you, like when you complete that class, you feel amazing the rest of the yeah. day. You are you yeah. are alert. You are wide you awake. Me. Like yeah, probably yeah. better for me too in sales. I'd probably be more. Just my mind would be there. tough. Yeah, so, firing fast. What's well, yeah, that? Right the oh, same group of people at five a.m. They're just hardcore. Like they are yeah, there yeah. for no frills. Um, they talk the less, like the least amount as compared bet, to the five fifty. There's some studs in there. Like, like, yeah, like, this guy Aaron has always been like he's my he's my target. Okay, <laughs> I I want to be like Aaron, and he knows this. I tell him this all the time. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna be like you. And so we were doing the the two hundred meter row. Okay, and like my thing was I'm gonna beat beat him i'm gonna beat him and so like he did his in a minute and 16 seconds i think that's what it was and no this is the 500 meter i apologize the worst of them all the 500 meter so he's he does his in a minute and 16 seconds right and so i get going and i am on track like i am on pace to be at a minute 13 because you can you have it on your monitor it kind of tells you where you are in relationship to everything i am on track I hit 400 meters and I ran completely out of air. My lungs. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. be like a mute 22. Just like, no one said. So that's another cool thing is if you are competitive, yeah. Orange Theory can also <laughs> scratch that itch for you every yes. now and then. If you need so do you it. like post their score on the big screen and his and his friend? Oh no. Okay. So we've no, got so, leaderboard. So we yeah. do that we post on our social media if you want it posted. Now this is all oh. again, you opt in and we'll celebrate you all day long, all month long. You want no to compare what you, do. you yeah. want to compare your scores to somebody else, let's do it. But you don't have to. I've had plenty okay. of people that are like, Jay, no, we're keeping this no. on the DL. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. Well, if you have like Big man plus score. And well, then they have reads. So, oh, so they okay. have you brackets, but, but you have, you uh, have different benchmarks. So you have, you know, like on your rower, you have the 200 meter, you have the 500 the meter, meter, you have the 2000, yeah, the thousand, and then the 2000 meter. 2000 and then, meter. And then on, on running, you have the mile run, you have the a 12, 12 minute, minute run, run. and mm-hmm. you have what's called a catch me if you can, which is really fun because it, it, like you're supposed to hit a distance and then they give you another distance to hit in a certain amount of time. And you got to hit that. And each time the time gets slower or, or smaller and smaller. So until you get caught, yeah. you just keep running and running and running. You've got um, and Everest. Then, yeah. The Everest, which I hate. Um, I hate oh, 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 clients oh. despise them, but then you have like, I would say probably like the pinnacle of all the benchmarks for OTF is the drive try. Dead which running. is, a, it's a triathlon and mm-hmm. it's, you know, weights, um, rowing and a three, what is it? A 5k a that 5K. you run? All yes. for your best time. Yeah. Um, well, Hey, the, the last thing, um, cause, um, you know, we can wrap it up here, but I did have a question. Cause you keep talking about all these little cool contests and events. And you said you went and played pickleball with you know, one of the, uh, uh, customers, um, off, Members, off time. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you. So on the social side of it, do you guys try to plan things too, um, outside the we studio the ball league? Oh, man. oh it was no, awesome okay. and deadly and violent. And it was, well, I can see for a single guy like myself, you know, 53, 54. And there, you know, one of the other things is mental, mental health. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's again, something we do really well. And I think you will find differences from studio to studio in that capacity. Uh, yeah, because mental health, you feel part of a community. You don't feel right. as depressed and 
Now we're in a small. Uh, Hendersonville Studio has a smaller, so we've got 500 members. You've got some city studios, like big city studios, Manhattan, all this, that have a thousand members plus. Wow. It becomes a little more difficult to really, really build that community feeling when you've got people in and out for work, don't really care to share much about themselves or whatever it is. It's it's a little harder for sure. that team, I'm sure, to you know find out if Susie had a baby or whatever it should be. For us, it's real easy. We have Christmas parties where we play White Elephant. We have mm-hmm. um, we had a we watch had party holiday. for somebody on The Voice. We had oh, a watch party well, for really uh, wow. yeah a local senior, a member, awesome. a studio yeah. member. We had a watch party for her to cheer her on. We had kickball where Mm -hmm. we thought we were going to have one team and ended up with six kickball teams. Wow. Did you guys all kick butt too? No, me. No. 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 (laughs) You would would think it didn't really translate. The competitiveness of kickball. (laughs) It didn't really translate. We had some people get hurt. And so we came to the realization that if we wanted to keep our studio open (laughs) with members, then we maybe didn't want to do kickball again. We would play like double headers, right? Yeah. I was always hammered. Oh. Scary. Jay was throwing these jello shots and these syringes oh, that were so, so amazing. Gee. <laughs> Bad influence. You. I'm 60, you know, all <laughs> around. Oh, wait a second. You're not from Utah. How do you know anything about jello shots? Oh, Come on. Oh, you should have oh, seen the in uh, oh my gosh! Are they kilo no Jello here? shots from no, Miami? Is that how you do it? So good. They were incredible. Half, high, it had like half vodka for some, and then tequila on the other. Mm. And people were showing up with coolers. We had a member yeah, was, show up with a big boombox that yeah, had a disco ball on top of it. This <laughs> sounds like a blast. So uh, it's, I was, I was, I remember looking at like our coach um, on that team, David, who's a former. Um, pilot oh, wow. and stuff yes and and the dude is like i mean he's amazing himself but like <laughs> look at david i'm like david i'm toast buddy <laughs> he's like i'm serious hilarious Christine. none of us care that was it's, what was fun but we were playing against cared. teams some of these that teams really, were like ultra i mean they were had, out like, there to win lights, you know <laughs> you guys need to have like a you need to have a what is it called the 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 the, the little croquet ball in your 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 well, we just talked about it a minute ago. Um, brainstorming something else that maybe won't <laughs> cause as much. We had a member break her finger. I mean, it oh, was no. it was you a, have really unathletic people that come to Orange you know, Theory and get healthy and strong. I That's told you I've never played a sport, but I didn't work <laughs> out with the best of them. Um, <laughs> so it was definitely interesting, but it turned into like a Friday hangout social for everyone. And after it's it was awesome. over, it's a we lot of fun. So, so much fun. fun. Sounds great. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, that I met so many other members that I wouldn't ever meet because of, of different times that they go and just had just an absolute wonderful time. It was it was so yeah. much fun. I so think yeah, Kevin, to answer your question, we do a lot to yeah. make sure the community stays tight, that the coaches are getting to know you on a personal level, that you get to know other people. Like, we want to be more than just a place that you come work out at. Now, if I just looked at your pricing on your website or talked mm-hmm. to someone just kind of casually and they mentioned what they pay a month, what you're getting with Orange Theory, I'm kind of doing a plug for you here, is so much more in terms of value and money and monthly, what you pay a month and value are synonymous. People know if they're getting a, a good deal from this or not. So so what you're saying is the value just is so overwhelming for that individual that even normally, because most gyms, what, charge you 35, 40 bucks, maybe 80 bucks a month. Even if this is a little north of 100, it's well worth it, then, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're looking for group fitness, Orange Theory is still on the lower side. Like we're, I mean, if I can name a ton of workouts out there that are charging north of 200. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is a great deal. It's a fantastic um, 
product all around. You're going to see the results. We're going to meet you where you're at. Um, day to day, your 100% doesn't have to be the same today as it was yesterday. We're still going to give you that great workout. We're going to care about you um, as a person. Uh, mm-hmm. I listen to Brett. You know, I'll ask him, dude, how are you doing today? And, you know, he'll just... And, I, and I'm not faking it. We aren't faking it. Like, we need life the people that come to us. They're That's good awesome. people. Well, everybody likes me once they get to know me. So I think my Orange Theory people will love me. So no one I'm excited. For 45 years, I can't stand you. So. I know. I can't stand him <laughs> either. I don't know how you put up with this joker. So, but that's all right. Hey, we have loved having you on here, G. Yes. You are awesome. Um, oh, I'm, ex- I'm actually excited you. about calling yeah. um, local people here. So, um, and, and I want everybody in the audience to know, we're going to include Orange Theory's website info uh brant's referral code so you can make sure his life's a little easier be awesome um, <laughs> maybe line two to once i it's become a member free. but uh but um yeah well maybe down the road we'll check in with you and we'll see my progress um and see where brent's at as well so very cool um, can't wait that's awesome can't so. wait anyway thank, thank you. you so much so good so fantastic Thanks for having me guys yeah, it's been fun. It's what well, hour went fast. Yeah. See you tomorrow, <laughs> so, Brett. I am not there tomorrow. I'll be there Wednesday, Thursday. See you Thursday. Yeah. Thank you too. You guys all and and have a great great uh great week. So go get it. What, what what's a first, what's the motto don't, at don't, don't ever theory. say that again, please. What's what's the motto at Orange Theory? I want to hear what the motto is. So. Again, this is everybody's got their own. School. We've got our own. Yes. I say Something along the lines of be kind to yourself, drink water, call mom. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.